In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Today our lesson is about reflections on being thankful on Thanksgiving. Of course, in the Bible, there are many stories about being thankful. But one story that we want to hone in on today is from the parable of the ten lepers in Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 11. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, it says that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was preaching in a place called Galilee and Samaria. And when he preached in Samaria and Galilee, there were ten lepers. They were far off from him. And while they were far away from him, they shouted out to him to be healed. And in turn, our Lord told them to go and show themselves to the priests because he healed them. Now, only one of those lepers who had been healed turned back. And when he turned back, he came and he fell down at the feet of our Lord and he thanked him for healing him. And our Lord said, isn't it strange? There were 10, but only one came back. What happened to the other nine? This is the central message of the parable, that when 10 people are healed, only one is grateful. And so the story of the Bible parable speaks to us about Israel and the Gentile people. In this story, the leper who returned was not an Israelite, but the others were. The ones who kept going away they were Israelites, people who were supposed to have known God, people who were supposed to know God's rules. But the one who returned, our Lord described him as a Samaritan, a stranger to God's laws. Now, the Old Testament tells us about how God struggled for his people, how he worked hard to bring them out of Egypt through many miracles and suffering. They came through the Red Sea untouched. And after receiving all of this blessing, the Israelites, when they got into the wilderness, they mocked Moses because they said, what have you done? You brought us out of Egypt to let us die here in the wilderness without food and shelter. The story of the 10 lepers reflects this idea that after God had done great things for Israel, they were ungrateful. And it's a warning for each and every one of us not to be ungrateful to God after he's done great things for us. Each and every one of us in our day-to-day -day lives have an opportunity to be thankful for God. We don't have to wait until Thanksgiving to be thankful, but often, it's on Thanksgiving Day that we get together with people and we say how thankful we are for the things that we have. God is compelling us not to wait until things are bad to be thankful, but God wants us to be thankful for the things that we have right at this moment. Thanksgiving is a time when we come together and we should focus on Two big ideas, gratitude and contentment. Let's begin with the latter of the two. What it means to be content is described in 1 Timothy chapter 6. St. Paul says to St. Timothy, godliness with contentment is great gain. What it means to be content is to be satisfied and what St. Paul says is important for us as Christians is to be satisfied with being the image of God, godliness. Now, after we are satisfied with being in the image of God, we should be thankful that God has chosen us to be in his image. The image of God is really what it means to be a Christian. We take the name of Christian as a part of our faith because what it means for us to be religious people is to be people who imitate the behavior of Jesus Christ. Now, St. Peter speaks about this when he writes in his epistle, 
1 Peter chapter 2, verse 19. He says, for this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience toward God endure grief and suffering. What does this go on to say after this verse? He says, for what glory is it if when we are corrected for our faults, we take it patiently? But if when we do well and we suffer for it and take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that you should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. For you were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. The Christian doctrine and teaching guides us as Christians to be sheep following our Lord in the road towards suffering for good things. It's important for us to realize that gratitude and contentment have to be gratitude and contentment for our position, not in this world, but in the world to come. From time to time, when we do good, people will say thanks. But just like this, the, the leper, who when our Lord healed him, there were 10. And often people won't be thankful for the good things that we do. Yet, we have to be willing to endure suffering wrongfully, even when we do good. All nine of those people who left should have come back and thanked God for healing them. And often in our lives, people are not going to be thankful to us for the good things that we do. But we should forge ahead doing it because this is the example that was set for us by Christ. Our Lord, he blessed the one who came back and he said that his faith had made him whole and healed him. Similarly, we should also bless those who are appreciative of the things that we do good, but not stop doing good because we don't get their thanks or their gratitude. Gratefulness and contentment are Christian virtues. And on Thanksgiving Day, each and every one of us should think about how we are the epitome or example of gratefulness and contentment. Let us be grateful to God for all the things that he has given us. Let us turn back like the leper and bow down at his feet and say thank you to him for what he's done. In all the things that we have up until this point, we could have ignored many of those things, but instead, what should we do? We should bow down and thank God for all that he has done good for us. So on Thanksgiving day, let us practice being grateful and thankful to God.